Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, and what I'm really into these days, mysteries and thrillers. Love them. And one of our friends, Elena Urquhart, you might know her from a little podcast called Morbid, wrote The Butcher and the Wren. It's a really great thriller about a serial killer. I mean, it is so scary. I cannot wait for the next one. And I love to listen to it. And guess what? As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Welding instructor Alex DeClaire knows VR training platforms like ForgeFX help students master their skills. There's a big learning curve with welding. Virtual reality simulates that exact muscle memory that they need. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Well, hello and welcome to What Was Crappens, a podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yo Bravs. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? We're in the same room today. Yeah. Because we're going to the iHeart Podcast Radio. Awards iHeart Podcast Awards tonight. Very excited here in Austin, Texas. And yeah. so we're together in the same room. So I didn't play the opening because that music, I can't, it's, it's a lot to balance. All right. It's a lot of audio to balance. I'm exhausted. In the meantime, go check out tickets for our European stint. We are going in May to Dublin, London, and Birmingham. Go get those tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. Also, we're doing the Netflix is a joke comedy festival in La La Land, same month. So come see us there. Very excited to see you, okay? Uh, this is a video, Crappens On Demand, and we do bonuses every week, which are also on Patreon. You can find links to that at Watch What Crappens. What say you today? How you feeling? Well, I'm feeling great. Uh, Miami had uh, finished out, closed out their reunion. Uh, what their a season. Show. What a show. So good. So fun. I was cracking up. I was... Um, I was taking some notes on the airplane on the way over here. I was finishing up the the, the notes. And, um, you know, so I'm watching Real Housewives of Miami on my laptop. And I have this thing. I always feel like if I'm watching a Real Housewives show and then the flight attendant comes by and doesn't make a comment to acknowledge like, oh, I love her. Or like, oh, my God. Like, if they don't give me something special, especially if it's a gay. If it's a gay that does not recognize, like... I am a fellow gay watching Real Houses of Miami. I get offended. I always feel like I should get like an extra set of peanuts or something as like a wink, like like we are tribe, you know. And I get you, girl. Uh, yeah, I always feel like I want them to say something. I want them to, I because I I want to know who they love, you know. And I want them to. I I always expect if I have a whole bunch of Alexia on my screen, I want the flight attendant to say, oh. She is just the worst. Or I love her. I, I'm sorry. I just love her. I want say say something. But the fact that you say nothing, I'm like, are 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 we even gay brothers in this? And I got nothing. No. I got nothing from the flight attendant. That's what I meant to say. The flight attendant on Delta did not seem to care. Yeah, give more flight attendants. Yeah, Jesus Christ. What very am I supposed upsetting. to do here? Just fly without anybody acknowledging my pain? Because I feel like people always have an opinion on Housewives when you're watching it on a plane. Everyone's mm-hmm. like, well, I don't. That's when you hear the most, well, I don't even own a TV. Like, that's where you meet yeah. people like that who are like, oh, you can watch that? <laughs> Again, I don't even own a TV. <laughs> that's when you hear most of it. Like, they're so much better than you. I love when you, when you find someone watching the Housewives on an airplane. That makes me so happy. But you don't really see it often. And, you know, for the longest time, when the, when the, the planes, 
would control, the airlines would control what you watched, you know, and they would have like, welcome to NBC Eye on America or something like that. And they would show every, they show like a million segments about golf. Like here's a behind the scenes story about this golfer. And here's another golfer who had something happen to him. And now here's someone in the world of finance who had something. It's like all very bro -y. And they're always showing a smattering of content from all their networks across the Comcast, you know, the NBC Comcast Universal family. And they show a little bit of something from here and from here and from here. And from Bravo, they always show Top Chef, which, of course, we love Top Chef. But it's like they're embarrassed of Real Housewives. And I just feel like I wasn't expecting to rant about this. But I just feel like the airlines need to stop being snobs about the Real Housewives. Oh, my God. Especially... Well, I was going to say Southwest, but they don't have TVs on there. No, so they what, don't. What are we talking about? Okay, so let's. I was just yeah. Let's yell. move on. I was just in the mood to yell. Let's move Southwest. on. I went. To, I went to a weird place with this. So Real Housewives. Well, you couldn't have gone to a weirder place than the Real Housewives of Miami themselves, because for the first time ever, we ended with an EDM mix. Oh, sorry, Ben. Of a opera song of Ave Maria. I don't think that's ever happened, and it was amazing. Yeah. I was cracking up this whole episode, and by the end, I was cheering, maybe yeah. crying, maybe a little bit. Just because they gave that gay such a chance. When yeah. he was like, it's the opera teacher. I was like, oh, no. And sure enough, he came on. I think he flossed. I don't know. He just there was something different about him. And he just gave it his all. He really went there. But where we start off is that uh, Gertie and Larsa are fighting about Larsa going and blabbing and telling everyone that Gertie had cancer. And then Larsa acting like she was the victim here, saying things like, you made me sick. Like, you think you're sick? I'm sick. I'm sick of the way you're, you're talking about me right now. Yeah, like, you hurt me too. Like, like she called me fake. Like, I feel like I was, like, hurt by it. Because, like, if you're my friend, like, you're not going to call me fake, like... Physically, you are, though. Ellie, have you seen your before and after picture, Larsa? Uh, like, oh, yeah? I have a, a before and after picture of you, too, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I do, my friend. That's that's Larsa's thing that she's doing for this reuni reunion, saying my friend and my love a lot, which my is love. kind of like Alexia thing to do. You right? are my love. Wait, what are you talking about? It's only my boobs and a tummy tuck, okay? The first time, like, the first time, like, step is to, the first step is to, like, admit it, baby. And then it starts with your BBL and that you had. <laughs> They're just going to keep coming for this woman and her gigantic ass. Yes. Now, it's partially her fault because it's not the most subtle. It's not the most subtle job I've ever seen. However, this is Housewives, and I feel like it's a very slippery slope. It's yeah. a very slippery, sailing-filled slope. And yes. sometimes I think we just need to back off. Yep. You know? Now, not in this case necessarily because it's anti-Larsa, but Larsa's had to defend that ass for three years now in a row. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, she's also lying about it for three years in a row. So Andy's like, well, let's go back to telling the other woman about Gertie's diagnosis. Uh, Lisa, how do you feel about it? She's like, well, I told her. I said, you shouldn't have done that. We had many conversations, and Larsa was very upset with this and what, what happened. She was in tears, almost in as many tears as I was about Lenny. Lenny. Ah. <laughs> And um, Curtis like, oh, 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 poor Larsa, poor Larsa. Okay, we get it, Lisa. Okay, we get it, mascot. Mean, we get it, mascot. Okay, you know mean. what? I, you know, I get it so much, I should have a big foam finger on right you're now, mean. just waving it around. Mascot. You're very mean. Okay. You're very mean. You're, you're very like mean. mean, like. You're like mean, like. Just stop it, mascot. You're okay, mean. look, I know you want to take your anger out on everyone, but you should have taken it out on Lenny directly, Lisa. Oh, my God. Well, you know what, Gertie? You know what, Gertie? You know what? Stand down, soldier. Stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Everything you said about me and my career cancer was all about Larsa's perspective. It's like, well, I'm not a mascot, okay? Yeah, la, 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 All right, all right, you know, that's enough. Okay, Penis. you know what? You don't have to do cartwheels in front. You don't have to do literal cart. Okay, okay. Oh, so you're a vendor now? You're, you're also. Text. Okay, so you're a mascot and you're handing out snacks. Congratulations. Okay, so you're a multitasker. <laughs> you jumped up and just started screaming at me this last episode. <laughs> Literally, I needed to understand how, where, how she was thinking. That's what you were telling me to do. Um, well, you know what? Didn't you think maybe you should have a one on one with Gertie? Didn't you I like Calder like Didn't you think? I like texting her, think? like, Didn't I like Calder, like... Didn't you think? Like not Calder on the phone, like. not on the phone, not on the phone. You no. should have called her on the phone. You know what? I'm just asking... Or no, you should have talked to her not on the phone. I'm just asking you something because, like, why didn't you just, like, pull her aside? And then okay, you could thank say you, something, Lexi, you know? like, 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 I appreciate you, you, my friend. It. Yeah, but that's how you should yeah, do it. Yeah, but, like, you can yeah. say out of this, my friend. But that's how you have to do it. You can it. say out of this, my friend, but like... that's what you do. You can, like, say out of this, like, my friend, like... 
fucking up these ladies never <laughs> stop talking over each other i mean the whole thing is just you get really good at kind of deciphering what they're saying you get words from one and then words from another and kind of put sentences together and Gertie's like no alexia don't stay out of this because this is the time i need everyone to speak up i need everyone to speak up against the national plague that is Larsa pippin <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm giving you a chance to say why, because it was like three months and you still haven't talked to her. So, like, come on. Like, why have you still not talked to her? Like, how many months is it going to be? And Marcus is backstage. He's like, oh, so now Alexia can speak up. Oh, my God. I wish I could be on that couch so bad. I wish it, bro. Oh, yeah. Would you go tell him off, Marcus? You big, bad Marcus. We're all so afraid of you, Marcus. You're terrifying. (laughs) And Jody's like... Yeah, it's totally true. Like, it's like, I wish I could say something also. Yeah, it's like it's crazy. Like, 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 I totally say like, something. I'm already getting dry out right now. It's really hard. Do you have any chapstick or This water? is like wild. Do you know, is there any value in a tetanus shot? Cause I, can you get a tetanus shot after you have locked jaw? Or is it too late? <laughs> Um, so then back to the stage, and he's like, so when you spoke to Nicole, you questioned whether she really had cancer? I mean, come on now. And Lars is like, yeah, but like, I just like called her because like, I thought like, I feel like you guys are like close, right? Like, I didn't want to call Gertie again, but like, I just wanted to know what was going on. It like totally makes sense. Doesn't that like add up like X plus Y Z, I feel like. Yeah, I said Lisa told Larsa something about Gertie testing her, and Larsa's like, but I was like, what is this test like? Why are you testing me like? Like, I thought we're not in school, like, like XYZs and like, and this and that and tests and such and that. Well, Laura's, uh, do you really think Gertie was using her cancer to garner sympathy? And she's like, well, like, I wouldn't garnish anything with, like, sympathy. Like, usually it's like parsley or a slice mm-hmm. of an orange. But still, though, I mean, I'm not, like, gonna lie, like, it was, like, very hurtful because, like, I feel like I would never in, like, I feel like a million years mm-hmm. think that anyone would think that I would take that information and do something malicious with it. You called her a lie, like, <laughs> answer the question. First, you told everybody, and then you suggested that she was lying about it. But, right. like, literally, like, I felt like, you th- you know what? You think cancer hurts? This hurt more. <laughs> I, felt it, I felt horrible. It, like, really hurt. Yeah, but, like, no one could try to tell me that I weaponized cancer. I tried to normalize my life so that it could be, like, I can still do this. And he's like, all right. Well, I'm curious, Gertie. You went through so much with Larsa this season. It doesn't seem like your relationship is in a great place. What would you need to do to count as to count you as a friend again? Well, I'm going to say I appreciate your apology. I really do. But to be honest, it's a show and tell kind of thing. Because honestly, it's just too much for me to bear. It's too much. We'll never be friends again unless she just gives me a hug at the end of the reunion out of nowhere. But like, listen, friend. Like, listen, love. Like, I did the opposite of a Miley Cyrus song. Like, I sent you flowers. Like, I held, I held your hand. Like, I did like all I could do. Okay. <laughs> I was very remorseful. Like, I mean, like, I don't know why, because she was faking the cancer. But like, I really wanted to be there for her for her fake cancer. And I said a prayer before she went to surgery. I mean, immediately the prayer was like, dear God, can you please bring Marcus home to me? Oh my God, he's in the other room. Whoops, sorry. Thanks, God. <laughs> God, when you're bringing Marcus, like, on the way, like, home to me, like, could you, like, mention that Gertie, like, has cancer, like, and, like, see if you can, like, find out if it's a lie about it. (laughs) All right, I want to switch gears. Kiki, I hear you have a new boyfriend. Ah, Anything you can tell us about him? Oh, for and she's like, I've waited three years, Andy. Please. I've waited longer than people have been waiting for Jesus. (laughs) Three years is nothing. So uh, she's found her perfect man, and she met him through Marisol, which you better check him for bugs. <laughs> Literal wires. And uh, Kiki is basically like, yeah, you know, she's like, basically, she like got, they, they matched up really quickly. And then Andy's like, by the way, hey, by the way, did your family ever take you back? Remember? And Kiki's like, no, I, I haven't spoke, talked to my stepmother since. And she uh-huh, also had three uh-huh, kids uh-huh, uh-huh, with my uh-huh. dad. Yeah, and like, yeah. I have my little, uh-huh. I have yeah. my little sister mm-hmm. who's been reaching out to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So we just like started mm-hmm. trying to talk. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. like That's Haiti. my dad left my fa- my mom. That's like Haiti. came to, to, to Miami and That's like Haiti. didn't tell my mom. And they're like nothing mm-hmm. anymore. And like broke mm-hmm. up with her. Like 
like never to this day dad like my dad's like that's never 80. said anything that's how like, they do it in 80 yeah like they like he never told mom very that they're 80. not together she still thinks so they're still 80. married yeah it's so haiti yeah it's very haiti <laughs> gertie it's like in two seconds she can't let it be about somebody else she's like mm-hmm. yep yep that's haiti that's yep. very haiti. that's haiti that's haiti uh so it's actually like a super sad story uh, where she, her dad moved on and got a new wife and then the wife treated her like shit and the dad joined her in treating her like shit. It's so sad. And yeah. she's like, and then I was like working at McDonald's to get myself through high school and I still had to send money Burger to King. my mom. Oh, you're right, Burger King. And I still had to send money to my mom because that's how, that's very Haiti. That's what that's you do. That's so Haiti. That's what you do. That's like, like, da 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 da, I'm Haiti. I'm hating it. That means I'm working 10 jobs in high school to send money to my mother. That's how you do. That's respect. And so, uh, um, um, she's crying and they're like talking about and it's crazy like the story is crazy and lisa's like oh my god that is so sad fifi my name is kiki <laughs> that is so lisa right now that is so not 80 what lisa just I, did i never realized the dominican republic was that hard no I'm talking about haiti other side of the island do you think it might be harder it might be easier if you go to the dominican democrat to sing you're Ready? not even making sense now lisa Lenny. I worked in a Burger King also. It was run by Lenny, and it was his, just his, his mansion. <laughs> wow. Well, Burr from Bank said, it was really heartbreaking to see all the women bail on Kiki's Swim Week event. So what did you have planned for everybody, and why was it so important to you? Was it about boobs? Well, by the way, I had surgery like a couple of days earlier, so I had to leave. So I'm okay. I'm exonerated. I'm okay. <laughs> Yes, she had surgery, so I knew that was coming. And then Nicole said that she couldn't make it. And Mary's still saying, well, I told you I was going to stay, but I tried. I tried to stay, but then I couldn't do it. So. <laughs> all right, all right. We don't have to hear all the excuses, especially not from friend of. And Kiki's like, yeah, it was just like it was painful because she never throws anything. And, you know, she lives in a small, small place with like a, it's like a two bedroom with just her and her daughter. And her daughter literally sleeps with her. And she's just, you know, she doesn't throw a birthday parties for her kids and she never really had the opportunity to have a throw a birthday party and she never had birthday parties growing up or whatever so she starts to sob because it's like now really like you know hitting breathe, on trauma breathe breathe breathe, uh, Kiki, breathe. Uh, uh, Kiki, breathe. it's very Kiki, haiti breathe. this is haiti this is so people, haiti right people now. cry in haiti this, this, yeah, what, this, this is how is it haiti. happens in haiti when you start talking about your issues look haiti and marisol's like oh come on don't cry <laughs> on, oh. and julia's like you need to go to farm farm <laughs> with god <laughs> and so then nicole's like well we can throw summer a birthday you know like we'll throw a birthday bash for summer and then she can have a birthday breathe 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 breathe, breathe. and she's like well you know listen like financially i'm saving all my money for my kids and i just don't want to waste it on parties and Julia's like, I know what it is like being a young mother in America trying to make it. You don't know the language. You are. I know what it is like. Yeah, she's she understands what it's like to be a single mom who's also a model. And so Marisol is like, well, everyone knows Kiki. And now, like, everyone knows Kiki now the way we know Kiki. I'm just glad. And Julia's like, yes, she's not just a girl who talks about cock and dildos. She actually has a voice and an amazing story. So anyway, let's keep talking about something else now. Jam, I have Jam. So they're like, well, we'll do a birthday party for your daughter in November. It's just, well, my son is October 5th, so you can do that. <laughs> he's like, can we get a two-for-one special, please? <laughs> Rudy goes, uh, he's 18. Don't push it, girl. He's 18. <laughs> that was so Haiti. <laughs> That's so Haiti. Uh, all right, moving on. I think it's safe to say everyone here was born a star. And Alexi's like, oh, God, I guess everybody just loves that one. I'm just giving everybody a line for life with this. You're all welcome. I gave you guys all a, a, a fabulous line to say. Yeah, but some would argue that the real star of this show is the vibrant, luxe, and sometimes over-the-top city of Miami. Oh, well, yeah, you know, Miami, yeah, that can be a star too. Yeah, okay, fine. We, we call it the city of Alexia, you know, star city, you know. So then we see shots of Miami, which is, like, gorgeous. But to be fair, it also has pink filters floating all over it half the time. He's mm -hmm. like, and here is Miami. It's like a floating palm tree, a purple palm tree just uh, yeah. floating over it. Um, so then um, Andy's like, I want to jump into the screen when I watch this show. Oh, I just like to imagine all the mountains of cocaine in that city, and I just want to dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on Take Your Employee to Work Day, which I guess <laughs> <laughs> it would be every day. One shouldn't say that part out loud. <laughs> uh, uh. 
Um, so then they talk about Nicole getting her new mansion. Will it be ready in time for the baby? And then um, a cheesecake from Factory says, <laughs> Wow, I couldn't believe my ears when I heard that Sophia, Larza's daughter, gets $2,500 a month in allowance. Why would you give that much money to a teenager? You guys don't like, understand. Like, like, LA is like super expensive. Like, like after she, like, after food, she orders like more food or like Uber or like, you know, like when she like buys presents for her friend's birthday. Day and like Sophia makes money and like and so like I have like a deal with like Fashion Nova like and so then they gave her a deal like and then she was like the face of Oscar de la Renta like she literally makes money like so I have to send her money because she like since she makes money like I have to send her money like mm. to pay for all the food like that she doesn't eat like yeah like and everybody's like trying to shame me for being a renter but like I tried to, t- to give her pride and tell her like it's Oscar de la Renta, so it's like better, like. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it, like, but the Oscars were last night, like, and so Sophia was like, that was like a night for Sophia because she represents Oscar likes. So then um, Adriana is like, Lars, uh, Larsa may have many faults, but she's a good mom. <laughs> and, and he goes, well, that's a double-edged sword. Actually, that was like the nicest thing I think Audrey has <laughs> I ever said about anybody on this show. Let's just take it. I have been taking a beating like this whole year, like. Yeah, it was like really hard for me. Like, I, I got beat with other people's cancer. Ow, your cancer hurt me. Ow. <laughs> Ow, like. Mm, that was really, that was so unfair of Gertie to like have cancer like this season. It like really hurt me. So then she starts squabbling, you know, of course, Gertie's like, oh, really? Do you know how not Haiti what you just did to me is? <laughs> how dare you? So they start squabbling again. And Andy's like, all right, we're going to leave her right there. Bye. And he like runs <laughs> off the set. He's like, I can not be with these ladies anymore by the way you know what they, for some reason something i thought was really funny was that when nicole was just like doing that boring segment talking about like you know like what's going on with the house or whatever did you ever buy the boat and she's like well we wanted to buy the boat but like the backyard is like all full of construction right now lisa was like oh yeah you can park the boat at Len- back in the in jody's yard you can park it in jody's yard which i felt was like her like little flex it was like such a lisa flex of course she's gonna like Bre- like because yeah, I'm like right, I'm right down the ocean from because now. Nicole because Nicole basically is in the market for a yacht she sort of has to like kind of one up and be like well we have yacht parking so you yeah can put we're it there. in the same neighborhood so whatever Very Lisa. yeah it's time for a commercial it's time for a crappens commercial as a professional welder Shayna Ford uses Forge FX to practice over and over which helps her improve her skills. The more muscle memory that you have, the smoother your weld is. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. At Amica Insurance, we know it's more than just a car or a house. It's the four wheels that get you where you're going and the four walls that welcome you home. When you combine auto and home insurance with Amica, We'll help protect it all. And the more you cover, the more you can save. Amica. Empathy is our best policy. So then, um, let's see. So now, okay, so they go kind of on break, but then Larsa comes over to Gertie, and she's just still going to try and talk to Gertie, and Gertie is not having it, which is so funny, but she's like, I was just, like, trying to, like, tell you, like, why, like, I had, like, I feel, like, problems with, like, but, like, when we had, like, problems at the, like, lunch, like, and Gertie's like, oh, my God, you, you know what? You see how forgiving I am. You see, you see, but you hurt me. You hurt me. You hurt me. Look how forgiving I am. Look, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> not forgiving you right now. mm and then Marcus just appears on stage and like whatever apology Larsa was trying to eke out, she just stops because she starts hugging Marcus. She's like, oh my God, I hi. I you so much. I hi. love you. So, like, hi. You're the queen. You're the you queen. Change. Your face looks different than it did 10 Keep minutes ago. Keep sitting on your throne. Keep sitting on your throne. You're the oh queen. Oh my God, I love you so much. Like. You know what? What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. <laughs> I'll still keep arguing even though you're hugging. Ernie just keeps going off by herself. She's like, look at her, hugging that guy. Hugging. You know what? It's not right and it's not wrong. That's what I'm going to say right now. You know what? It's not right, but it's okay. I'm going to make it anyway. <laughs> so Lisa's just doing her makeup, and she's got this gigantic mirror. So Marisol's giving her shit. And then um, Nicole, of course, who's like one of the people. She's like, oh, my God, we're, like, so different. Because she, like, has a huge mirror, but, like, I only have a small mirror. <laughs> That's such a Nicole thing to say. Like, a thing that she finds so funny that's, like, very 
average. <laughs> like that's like the funniest thing ever because she's like not wearing socks, but I'm totally wearing socks, guys. Well, Nicole does her whole like I'm the richest one, but like I'm the most down to earth of all the people. <laughs> and the other day, you know, there's that Bravo account. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name right now. I'm not trying to be an asshole, even though I am being one by not remembering your name, which is so rude. But there's this Bravo account that just goes through all the fake purses, like it spots the fake oh, designer really? stuff that wow. they're all wearing. And they called Nicole out for one. And so she had an Instagram post the other day that was like, listen, like, I love your whatever that you have. I love what you're doing. Amazing. But just so you know, like, this is actually real. And here's the receipt for it. She printed the receipt out on there. So that's (laughs) funny. That was pretty funny. She's like, and keep it up because I really love your work. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We are back. And uh, I tried several times to wake up from this living nightmare, but it turns out this is my life. I am dealing with these ladies squabbling in front of me incessantly. So we need a price check on something. Ladies, how much do you think organic jam costs? And of course, Nicole's like, uh, like $15. I don't know, like 15, like $10, like, like maybe fifth, like $10. Um, I don't know, like, uh, oh, well, you know, like Space Jam, because like, you know, that's a pretty good movie. Yeah. I'm pretty connected to that movie. I don't want to, I don't want to like talk about Marcus's dad, like who who else is like moms and dads do we talk about? Like, (laughs) we should talk about someone else's, but like Space Jam brought me like a lot of money. (laughs) Just going to say, while it was happening and now as well. I Googled and Jam costs $50. Up to fifty dollars. And Kiki's like fifty. Does it come with vibrator? <laughs> She's back. She's back. She's back, everybody. <laughs> She's feeling better. Um. So, um, um, Beverly from Sills. <laughs> Beverly from Sills. <laughs> <This is> Julia, <laughs> your offer for performance to Martina was so touching. Um. Yeah, it was. It's harrowing, okay? It touched... I literally got tinnitus. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to be touched, okay? Leave no touching. Alone. Do not touch me then. <laughs> okay? It's like going to a zoo. No touching. And then we see a clip of it, and it's even worse. I mean, it's... God bless her heart. I mean, if Intentions made music, this would be a full-on orchestra, but... Well, I have to say, in all the years of all the housewives and all the cities, this was one of my favorite things i've seen it was so special i love seeing adriana at the piano and and seeing the sheer joy on martina's face it was a beautiful moment this was there's just you're saying this was one of your favorite moments this opera moment this was so cringy (laughs) i mean it was sweet but it was cringy yeah i mean i liked it too when it happened it's just one of those things that just can't happen often yeah but then it happens later and it is literally my favorite thing that's Mm -hmm. ever happened so you know who knows i guess it's just the setting so she's like you do crazy things for life and God. So then, Adriana, do you think Julia could have a successful career in music? And Adriana goes, such an Adriana. She's like, you know, it's just she has so much fun, Andy, and it is such a hobby for her. And, you know, it's so nice to see. And Marisol just goes, that's a really long no, Andy. That's a slow no, Andy. Slow no. No, I was more than supportive, and I think that she's... I think that she's having fun, and uh, you know she has a hobby, and maybe we'll do a duet someday. Who knows? So, all right. Well, uh, Julia, did you? She's do- fucking Emilio Estevez, right? No, uh, uh, Emilio Estefan. She's fucking Emilio Estefan. Maybe. Right? But are we, we're, are we all be. clear on that? <laughs> well, Julia, did you feel torn between Adriana and Alexia? Just no, I wouldn't. It wasn't hard, but you know, Adriana and I had bond. They started ten years ago over goat, and now I can't break bond. But only if, the only way I can break bond is if something happens with Adriana, and I hope nothing will cross us. I'm like, okay, so next season you guys are going to be having a fallout. We've seen this show before. hundred percent. We yeah. watch The Real Housewives. <laughs> But, you know, we organically started to get to know each other. It was so organic, we could put it in jar and sell for $97. <laughs> I googled. Uh, yes. So, uh, better from Bullion says, Adriana, watching the season, I felt like Alexia came into the year with the plan to redeem herself. It felt like PR. Do you feel like, feel like her? she's really interested in being Julia's friend, and is that genuine? Well, I think it's classic example of somebody being gullible because she is new person. And here's what I have to say. She is getting befriended by Hubris George. Okay? <laughs> From Hubris Girls. 
It was movie by Tina Fey. <laughs> <laughs> on, sun, on, on Wednesdays, we wear hubris. So <laughs> she's like, oh, wow. Well, Stop uh, trying to make hubris happen. Okay. She doesn't even hubris here. Oh, wow. See, look, uh, Julia. Look, look at Julia. How about a newbie being tainted by an oldie? That's what you did to her, Adriana. This is like the time Paul Anka was 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 hanging out with Annette Funicello and totally iced, iced out Frankie Avalon. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and Adriana's like, have some class. I'm talking here. Oh, really? You're no one to dictate class. You're a hot mess, Adriana. She's like, you're, you're really the example of class. Have you seen your behavior for the past 13 years? I mean, come on. And she's oh, yeah, you're dirty, greasy hair is classy. And it's like, okay, now we're going to greasy hair? Come on. There you go. The plastics are speaking. The plastics. Oh, well, I don't know who you're referring to, but if you want to refer to me as a name other than Alexia, you can call me a star. <laughs> <laughs> oh look it's regina george and gretchen together over there the hu it's hubris and hubris together there <sighs> julia do you think that my friendship with you is fake or is it a pr stunt do, like i think we've both seen like stars can can like regular people right well last year we saw you don't want to try people this year you try people <laughs> well i think alexia likes julia more than me these days personally hold on let me just show how lighthearted i am with this <laughs> Oh, well, you know, oh, well, you know, Peter, unlike my apartment, there's room for everybody. <laughs> so, um, uh, Peanut from Butter says, what about the baby adoption? But hell, Martina's only 90. Surely this is going to happen any day now. And she's like, oh, well, well Martina is cancer free. So we are back to adopting plants. We are going to speed up process. I've contacted nine agencies. <laughs> so babies, there will be baby coming from someplace for sure. <laughs> or Chia Pet. So Andy's like, well, let's talk about Mexico. Alexia, you encouraged Kiki to eat a cricket. But you didn't eat one yourself. Oh, well, to be fair, I thought like it meant like getting cricket wireless, which, you know, stars don't do that. No, no, no. But I'm so scared of cricket. I'm, you know, well, you know, I'm scared of cricket and insects. I just figured it'd be like, it'd like pop in my mouth or bite me or something like that, you know? And Kiki's like, well, the thing I say, YOLO. Oh, my God, that is so <laughs> Haiti of you. I just have That's to so Haiti. That is so Haiti. YOLO. Like YOLO. <laughs> And Adriana, Adriana, it was so fun seeing you perform. What did that feel like? And she's like, oh, surreal, Andy, to finally have this moment, you know, where I know the glorious Stefan is somewhere punching her hand in a wall. <laughs> it feels so good, you know? <laughs> well, uh, well, that's cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, it wasn't all Mark sipping and dildo flipping in Mexico. Ha! Larsa, you were hurt by Alexia not supporting you. Why was that? Because, like, I feel like, like, my friend, like, I can't believe, like, if she's my friend, like, love, like, saying that I only, like, had, like, I feel like tequila for, like, 10 minutes, like, what is that? Like, two minutes? That's, like, hurtful. Well, yeah, no, but if I'm your friend, I would have known about your tequila brand. But everybody, like, knew about it. Like, Mary so knew. Like, I don't know. Everybody knew the minute the Kardashians all came out with a tequila that, of course, I had one, too, <laughs> right? Come on. You knew you knew Marisol, right? No, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I've been talking about my tequila brand for years, like... No. This is what I'm talking about right now, Andy. You know? Like, look. Lies. This is lies, Larsa. What lies, my love? What no, lies, my like love? No, it's like lies, you know? Because, like, this is the example of the thing that I'm saying. Because, like, you're telling me that I'm the only one that says the truth, you know? And, like, I didn't say I'm the only one, uh, the only one who who says the truth. But, like, right now, you just said everyone knew about your tequila brand. But, like, nobody knows about your tequila brand. Lisa, nobody knows about it. Lisa, like, did you know that's about it. my tequila like? No. Adriana, like, like did you know about my tequila no, like? she didn't Andy, know. Andy, did you know about no, my tequila like? she didn't know either. Hold on one nobody second. Nobody knew. Okay, the cameraman, bro. did you know about my tequila no, like? No, bro, the cameraman doesn't even microphone know. Microphone man, did you know about my tequila no, like? No, microphone man, he doesn't know anything. Okay, plant on the wall, did you know about my tequila like? I don't talk to plants, I can tell you that right door. now. Door, okay, door. Okay, door didn't know. Did the you know about my tequila know like? Nobody knew, okay? Wow. And Alexia's like, yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. You shouldn't be so defensive, like, I just didn't know about it. And she's like, well, yeah, but you shouldn't say, like, Larsa has a tequila for two minutes like. She's like, okay, do you know what's better? Here. Larsa has a, a tequila for two hours. Look, is that better? That's more time. That's more time. That's, that's more time. That's a lot of time in Star Years. That's a lot of time. Yeah. 
And so she's like, so then Larsa, her voice suddenly changes. She goes from being like, what are you talking about? Why are you saying two years? She, she suddenly goes, well, what kind of friend are you? <laughs> a friend like you who needs enemies? Who needs enemies with a friend like you? <laughs> <laughs> I love when Larsa's real voice comes out. Oh, so um, no one knows about this tequila, which I think was really funny. And then Gertie's like, well, you know, like, here's the thing with you, Larsa. Okay. Like, we're talking about the jewelry line. We're talking about a dog collar. We go here. We're talking about a tequila, <laughs> which is so funny. And that is so real housewives, too. Like, the yeah. only reason you ever invite anywhere, anybody anywhere is to have a new business. And Larsa has just taken it. To the extreme. Yeah. And Andy's like, well, people do this on the show. It's like, no, no, no. But this is like, it's like a lot of product pushing. Like, product pushing Pippin. That's what all I'm saying. Well, oh, you know, I give you guys gifts. If you want to taste my tequila, you want a piece of Larsa Murray jewelry, I'm going to give yeah, you gifts. Like, like, how is that bad for me to give you my own money like? I'm like, sorry. I'm back. Like, I'm so sorry for, like, giving you diamonds about it. My voice um, is back, like, sorry about that, like. But there's a difference between having a business where you're like, I'm going to have a store, you know? I'm opening a store, something like that. Larsa is just taking Instagram deals, and that's yeah. like her thing, you know, that she's probably making a dollar per customer on or whatever. Well, so I've, every fucking episode, it's a different. Well, I think I get the sense that what she's doing is she's acting like she's inviting people over for sincere moments out of sincerity, out of like wanting to grow a friendship or to connect with people. And then you get there and you realize uh, it's just an advertisement for whatever, you know, Instagram tchotchke she is selling. Yeah. She's like, but, you know, I wanted to have like an apology lunch for Gertie. And that's why when I invited you guys to Mexico, I had my tequila bottles lined up to spell Gertie has cancer like. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard getting the tequila bottles in the shape of a comma, but we did it. It was like really hard like. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, where are we here? And he's like, Larsa, you said you're involved in these businesses because you never had a Todd. But can you understand how someone would find that hypocritical given that you're with Scotty for 24 years? But like, I just didn't have a Todd. Like, sorry. Like, I mean, come on. Like, sure, I was with Scotty, but she was with Herman. Like, what's the difference? Oh, no. Okay, so now you're going to talk about Herman? You know, you said Todd before. Now you're going to talk about Herman. Wow, wow. The difference between a Todd. Uh, Herman and Scotty, by the way, is like $50 million at least. I mean, yes. first of all, I can't believe you're even going to compare that. So Alexi's like, don't you talk about Herman, okay? If anybody's going to talk about Herman, it's going to be me when I out him posthumously <laughs> on television, okay? <laughs> well, I'm just saying I don't have a Todd. That's all. Uh, it's like, well, I took offense because she made that comment because I thought it was hypocritical. And she had Scotty for 23 years. How is it hypocritical? I gave you a compliment. Like, it's like what was the compliment? She goes, because, like, you have a, like, dual income and, like, your home, I love. So, like, your rent, your expenses, like, everything you make. Like, I hope you make a billion dollars per year. Like, I don't have that. That's what I'm saying. Recently. Yeah. Recently. Thorsa. You're rich as hell. You have half of Scotty's money. We have internet. Yeah. All you have to do is Google this shit. Now, in her defense, um, no one should be giving her shit for, like, trying to hawk things on Housewives. I guess, and I think but... that she actually does have a point. She's saying, like, you know, I've got to hustle for everything in my life at this point. I mean, but she does have she does have alimony. But, it is, but she doesn't have anyone... I will say this. I think if someone says, like, you know, I don't have a Todd right now, I actually think that's okay to say, believe it or not. You know, doing something alone versus doing something with a partner in any sort of way, it's just going to be a little harder. And I think that, like, Alexia just turning that into, like... <gasps> Like, oh, my God. Like, Alexia got so mad about She's it. She's suggesting that every every piece of money I have comes from Todd. But, like, I do, it, I do it on my own. But it's like, Alexia, what is your job? You have a nail salon. <laughs> you have a nail salon. And you uh, live in this, like, luxury high-end tower. And then you want to be like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't, I, don't, I don't rely on a Todd. I guess my point is probably problematic. But it's like, neither one of you could be accused of like being a boss <laughs> like in these situations one of you they're is, not, got they're, money from Scotty Pippen which rightly so I mean you had and raised the children but, but there's, it's like they're trying to make it sound like they're these big like neither one of them women, are women pioneers but it's also they're not gonna okay be case, they're not going to be case like, studies at Harvard Business School right but it's also okay like there's no shame in it I think no, sometimes you're right. you're right. you know I think sometimes these shows take they make it to where it's like Oh, well, your money came from a marriage, then it's not as important as my candle money. I made this from selling candles. Like, money's money. Like, 
Yeah. So what? Who cares? She fucked Scottie Pippen for how many years and had how many of his kids? She earned it. That's Five what I times say. a night, too. Jeez. Um, so no, that was like four. We like do it like, like Marcus and I do it like five. Seven. Oh yeah, you're right. Like yeah. five times. So Gertrude's like recently, recently is when you don't you were, you you were recently like this, and she's like, it's been like six years. Like, what's recently like, my love? Like when I was going through my divorce for six years, I didn't get a nickel. Like, I got just several quarters, and I did. I had to make it on my own. Like. And um, so now we move to the boat ride from hell and this huge gondola fight starting over feeding some dogs. Lisa, looking back, do you regret feeding them? She's like, my kids? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had to teach them what dieting meant at about two years old. She's like, no, no, I meant the dogs. Oh, all right. Well, that was one of the worst days of my life. I had to sign a paper. It was one of the biggest life-changing moments in my life. Do you understand that day, as I was being rowed through the hovels and the dilapidated huts, I was signing a document that was saying that someone was going to build me a mansion on the beach of Miami. It was horrible, a horrible day. So then Kiki's like, yeah, that was disrespectful. And, you know, you look down on people like me and everybody's telling you to stop and you didn't say anything. But then the moment I said, Lisa, that's not nice. You tell me this. You scream at me to shut the fuck up. And why do you guys always why do you always have to scream at me? And you never understand where you, you know, you talk about poor people, the way you talked about that dog. And like she's, you know, rightly. She's like, you have to remember where you come from. Lisa's just like, yeah. I decided paper. She's like, you don't remember where you come from, okay? Before you met Lenny, you were just oh, like, Oh, I remember. I remember. She's like, you don't act like it. She's like, oh, I still remember. You I, want I, still, I still smell blue cheese on my hands. All right? You want to see me make a soft serve cone? Because I can do that. <laughs> they don't call me a queen for nothing, okay? Hashtag dairy. <laughs> Have you ever just seen a pole and then just started putting like blue cheese from wings and like a little nutty topping on it from the Dairy Queen? Trust me, <laughs> all of my paths combine. No, you're so you act very entitled and you're selfish and you look down on people, especially me in this group. And you're going to treat you're going to treat me in this group like I like I don't you treat me like I don't respect like I don't like I She's don't belong you there. You don't respect me, but you're you gonna are respect gonna respect me. me. You will. And um, <laughs> and then wait, I took a photo of this. Let me show you this. I I, I meant I know what it looks like because it happened the other day in Beverly Hills too. They they go too far over the top with this advertising while the show's going on. So and the other day, Sutton's like, "Well, I cannot believe." You would say something when you know I was in a custody battle. And then it's just like Kung Fu Panda over. <laughs> well, over here's her Kiki. Head. Here's Kiki declaring, you don't respect me. But guess what? You are going to respect me. You are going to treat me like I'm a member of this group. You will respect me. And then a box, a square box, literally covers her entire face, <laughs> decapitates so her. So Wait, hold on. Here. I'll put it up on... It decapitates her. <laughs> Can you see this on the camera? Well, I can't see. tell. Oh, wait, here. Look at that. <laughs> She's like, you will respect me while a, a box decapitates her and there's a panda where her head's supposed to be that dancing is, around. That is some funny shit. So while she's actively talking about not being a race in this group and while and, and demanding respect, NBC's <laughs> like, like here, a- <laughs> let's put a cartoon panda over her face and have it dance around to promote some movie oh, that's going to terrorize families for years. Well, so backstage, Marcus is just like, you know what? I think they just misunderstood her, but I think you know that must have been really triggering for kiki but you know like i don't know she yeah. can't she at least it can't stay mad i mean yeah that panda really is cute at the end of the day yeah you know we got we can park a yacht in our backyard so that's pretty cool yeah i got a pretty big yeah, backyard so sure, like sure, sure. yeah that's cool so then Lisa's like, I'm sorry you took it like that, but I had a terrible day. And she's like, you don't even know my kids' names. And she goes, I do, Jamar and Summer. She goes, oh, well, now you did it. Okay, well, bravo, bravo, <laughs> then you're getting there. Uh, Lisa, when Kiki did open up to you about her past, you said, I can't fix your childhood trauma. I'm not a therapist. Yeah, well, my delivery was terrible. Oh, <laughs> your delivery? Your del- that was a bad pizza, Lisa. The delivery of the statement. It was, it, was, it was the pizza, Lisa. She's like, my delivery and my words? Is that better? But look, look. the truth of the matter is this. I don't know and didn't know these things about, like, you. I don't know these things, but you don't know these things about me. Just like you don't, like, you don't. <laughs> She's like, I don't know you, but you don't know me either. She, which is like, I, I, don't, I don't think that's fair to say that. 
because we're not talking about you, Lisa. The point is, like, you are so self-involved. You don't even know her children's names. So, okay, Kiki may not know your deep, dark secrets about what really happened to Dairy Queen. But, like, we're not asking about deep, dark secrets. We're asking that you just retain simple information about her life, like her children's names. I mean, to be fair, I don't know Lisa's kids' names. Really, like Logan and L. I would never have known that. Well, their their original names were Cheat and Day. <laughs> Cheat Day, get over here. <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. Hey, grown-ups. The Cat in the Hat cast is a new podcast from Wondery, perfect for the whole family. Join the Cat in the Hat and your favorite Dr. Seuss characters as they get whisked away on a new adventure every week. Fish dreams of creating his very own polite and quiet podcast. That is, until he gets a surprise visit to his fishbowl podcast studio from the cat in the hat himself. And it becomes very clear that the cat has other plans for the podcast. And those plans are the opposite of quiet. Sing along to new favorite songs, try your luck at Titanic tongue twisters, have some fun with wondrous wordplay, and most importantly, bring your family along for all of the adventures in the cat in the hat cast. Follow the Cat in the Hat cast on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to the Cat in the Hat cast early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Join Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Wondery Kids Plus on Apple Podcasts today. Uh, So then Andy does this, are we going to move forward through this? Because this is the part where we all make up. And Kiki's like, baby steps, baby steps. I have a baby. What's her name? Uh (laughs) Allison? I don't have a baby. Her name is Steps. I literally just said her name. Uh, Okay, so then... um... On that note, let's close... Okay, that's enough. I don't want to talk to you people anymore. I could ask more questions about that boat ride, like about Julia and those dolls, and I could ask more questions to Lisa about why she is so awful to Kiki. But honestly, I'm at the end of my rope, so let's just close this out now. Hey, Adriana, are you going to be singing anymore? And she's like, oh, yes. And I have a big surprise that is coming next year, which I'm now going to reveal now. I'm going to kick off my tour at the Miami Inter with Messi and Beckham and Emilio. I'm like, you are, okay. You're going to be singing a song. (laughs) I'm kicking off my tour. You're not, what, are you performing with Lionel Messi and (laughs) David Beckham? Come on. (laughs) Oh, and Nicole, what are you looking forward to the most? And she's like, being basically extremely rich. Um, it's pretty, it's a lot to look forward to, Wendy. And I'm going to have a very rich baby as well. So that's super fun. And what about Lisa? And she's like, well, I feel like the anger is behind me. Okay. <laughs> sure. Literally. <laughs> well, stop following me, Lenny. God. Uh. You do seem happier. Uh, and by happier, I mean still the same tragic mess, but I just have to say that to be nice. Yeah. And Lisa's like, yeah, I feel lighter. God, I'm so happy. Lighter. That's a good word for me. But uh, getting out of the house was so toxic, and I'm just so excited to be getting into a different house from Lenny. And I just feel like a weight was really lifted off of my shoulders. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know, I developed a platform to help people with divorce and also with prenups. What? Yeah. What does that mean? Is she saying that by going through it on TV, she helped other people? No, no. She's created like a website. She created like a business that's like, hey, if you're going through this, we're going to help you out. And Marisol's mm-hmm. like, oh, and you're welcome for the name. And Lisa goes, split well. She's like, yeah, I gave you that name. Remember? Alexia was there. Remember, Alexia? You can vouch for me, right? You're my best friend. You're a star. You can vouch for me. Right. Can I just Bro. say, I don't know that I would trust Lisa with that. <laughs> I'm going to just go out on a limb and say, don't go to this website, okay? Support Lisa in other ways. Asking Lisa for it, it's like coming to me to ask, like, how to make a salad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just don't. Just don't. I'm going to tell you to put M&Ms on Well, top, it's always okay? like how people with the most fucked up personal lives then become life ther- ther- life coaches, and you're like, but do I trust you That is this? true. Yeah. I'm not I don't, sure. I'm not going to take uh, divorce advice from fucking Lisa, okay? Uh, other things, you know, maybe like how to have a closet with the dry cleaning rack inside of it to spin your clothes <laughs> around. And that that's good. You know, something like that. Yeah. Um, so so Marisol's like, yeah, no, bro was there with me I, when I came up with the name. Re- remember that, bro? Remember that? And Lexi's like, mm, no, I don't remember anything. Mm, no, no, no mm-hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember. Which is funny because later on she uses lunch. Marisol forgetting. Yeah. I don't need <laughs> no, lunch. I don't know. I'm not sure. She's like, no, I was sitting with Julia and I was like, 
Split well. Split well. No, no, you were talking about the you were talking about the check. You want to split the check? No, no, I was giving a branding advice. God. Mm. All right, well, no one remembers besides me. I guess that's cool, then. <laughs> so, Larza, you found love, and uh, you also found a fair amount of haters along the way. Anything you want to say to them? She's like, stop blaming me, maybe, like, for cancer, like, okay? Because, <laughs> like, I'm sick of it. And, like, I'm living, like, my best life, like, like, I'm really happy. My kids are thriving. My son is, like, 18 years old. He's getting recruited to, like, the best schools on, like, the planet, like, I feel like. <laughs> So, yeah, Space Jam University, like, and Andy's like, well, Marisol, what do you feel like you've learned? She's like, well, this is my third marriage, you know, and I haven't filed any legal papers in the U.S., but I am married in Mexico and I'm married in Scotland. This is the way I want to do things, Mexican, Scottish things, and I'm in my 50s and I'm doing it my way. I swear to God, I really did come up with spit well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I said spit well instead of split well. Well, that would be the problem. Oh, so everybody's gotten to know Kiki better. And she's like, the truth will set you free, Andy. You know, my friends always understand that. So Lisa's like, kisses. I'm giving you trouble she's kisses. Like, mwah, mwah, Pretend mwah. these these are invisible chicken breasts I'm sending to you. <laughs> Lisa, why are you sending kisses to an animated panda right now? Kung Fu Panda and Theater Soup. <laughs> See it exclusively on Kiki's face. <laughs> And then Julia's like, I thought I had this group figured out, but then I thought, no, people can change. I took a chance, a chance on God. And then Lars is like, um, like, I don't like any, oh no, she goes, but I strengthened old friendships. Uh, the only one I don't, uh, I don't know about is Larsa. I don't believe her butt is real. <laughs> and Larsa's like, yeah, but like, I don't like understand like your relationship with Martina either. So like, whatever, love. You told Alexia you like black men's penises like. I love um, Larsa coming up with an on the fly uh, response. You told uh, Alexia like you like um, uh, light bulbs that are in the shape of like penises yeah that's what it is like hey you like penises yeah and alexa's like oh my god why is everybody blaming me for this stuff <laughs> and and he goes well can't someone love martina narvatilova and also love black penises i mean this is 2024 <laughs> alexia you ended last season with a lot of freight relationships in the group but you made it your mission to build those bridges oh yeah well you know because as a star that, those were my intentions and i thought i was doing a good job but I'm like, until unfortunately certain circumstances happened this season that by the way nicole i feel like she's really the only one that i really want to work towards next season because you know she's very rich but she has a small mirror you know and I, so i feel like i want to learn about that <laughs> and um she's like yeah you know i always spoke super highly of her you know i don't know how we always get stuck in this situation me and nicole <laughs> because you always freak out on her over yes. stupid little tiny things that aren't her fault yes and nicole's like i totally agree with that and Lars is like yeah but i feel like alexia like feel like Owes us like all I feel like an apology like because she called us all liars. Six hours ago. Oh, well, the entire America knows I speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one here. The entire America. And just going, the entire America. <laughs> I'm not a liar. Oh God! So I'm now they liar. start with this. I'm not a liar. I'm not I a liar. liar. I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar. Should I say it? Should I say it to her? Should I say it to her about it? Maybe I should say I'm it. I'm not a liar. Say it. Like I feel like I'm saying like okay, like I'm saying like I feel like you owe us an apology, Alexia, and like let me see your growth, like the rest of us. Like She's yeah. Like, well, I said it, I said it today because like there's a lot of people here today who are lying. Okay, and I'm not gonna apologize to you. Like uh, what? Uh, what? It take three months for you to tell Gertie, you know, about that, and you want you want me to apologize to you i por favor you're delusional you're delusional as well. guys this is the farewell why <laughs> my god when nicole's like guys it's a farewell okay all right all right <laughs> who are the liars in the group well we're gonna start with the biggest liar which is adriana <laughs> oh god here we go okay next liar regina hubris over there next liar okay well i know my situation with nicole okay so like i was proving that she was lying so there you go. She said she had nothing to do with it, with Anna, and she did. So she lied. Next lie. Okay, what about Lisa Hoxstein? Um, I think Lisa's pretty honest. What about Larsa? Larsa lies. All right, liar. Larsa, you're a liar. <laughs> about okay. what though? About what though? Doesn't matter. Like, what been, though? That's, that's all right. You're about a liar. You're a liar. About what okay, though? what about Gertie? I feel like you're Gertie, a liar, though. What about, like... uh, all right, what about Gertie? Gertie, Gertie liar? No, Gertie's not a liar. Okay, what about Julia? Julia's honest, you know, and Kiki's super honest. Marisol... 
She doesn't remember things, <laughs> Emmy. <laughs> what, bro? That's such a fail. You're gonna do that to me, bro? <laughs> Look, Andy, I don't like lies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the biggest liar is calling us liars, like good, like <laughs> I love that, like. <laughs> Marisol is so pissed. She's like, "What the hell?" So, I mean, in Alexia's defense, I think she was trying to have your back by not saying, "Of course, she's a liar." Yeah, like she just tell she she hires pi private investigators and <laughs> against people, you know? Yeah, because Alexia literally cracks up when she says, "Well." Well, Marisol, uh, she just doesn't remember. She doesn't remember. <laughs> she like knows she's like full of shit when she says it. So then um, <laughs> now it's a, the Gertie cancer thing again. So Lars is like, you know, I just feel like like I need to like give Gertie like a hug and like tell her I'm like X, Y, Zari, you know? <laughs> and Gertie's like, oh my God, all this damn time, that's all you needed to do. Then here you're doing it. Okay, get up, get up, get up. Come, I'm going to get up. Now. Gertie. We're going to hug. We're Gertie gonna hug. loves a big display. We're gonna hug. So they hug. I and love when Gertie like pouts her lips and then nods really emphatically. That's, all, like, I, mm -hmm. that's all I needed. Mm -hmm. This is so hitty. Mm -hmm. This is so. Are hitty. you gonna do it now? We're gonna do a hug now. Oh my god! That's Look all at I us. We're doing that's a hug. All I that's all I needed. Do you feel better now? You know, I'm that's a lover, it. not a fighter. I'm a lover, uh, not a fighter. I'm a forgiver. I feel like sometimes we have to yell it out and like argue and get our points across, and then we're over it. Like, so then Adriana is like, <laughs> okay. I have to read something from the Bible. They're like, oh, <laughs> like, I've been holding Christ a Bible sake. all night. Oh, well, you shouldn't be holding a Bible, by the way, of all people. Am I right? Oh, uh, uh, okay. Ecclesiastes 320 says, all go to one place. You're all dust. Mary's soul is old. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure it doesn't say that. <laughs> it does. And I think it's the most humbling thing when you have hubris. To see great news of her pregnancy and her cancer battling and her father died. And at the end of the day, you know, we all come from dust and we go back to dust. That's what I'm saying. I love that. I would like to say something. We're all going to die. <laughs> I know. And Gertie goes, circle. It's a circle. circle. It's, it's a, a circle. circle. It's a circle. It's, it's a, a circle. circle. It's, it's like, yes, we got it. <laughs> Nicole's like, guys, guys, we have so much to look forward to. Gertie is cancer free. Mirrors are getting smaller. Frankie is thriving. Julia's singing, sort of. Kiki's got a boyfriend. Marisol, you've got a... Cockies. <laughs> I mean, look so much. You know? Everyone's doing... Most of us are doing a lot. Lisa, you... Uh, there's uh you there's things that you have a scent of something you smell like Lenny now it's great you're doing things yeah, I'm adopting child I'm adopting child got jam <laughs> so now the they bring out Lars's tequila and uh because it finally arrived and he's like wow and he's handing out the tequila and he goes the the bottle is beautiful it, it kind of looks like a vagina. <laughs> He's like sort of walking by and looking at like, wait a second. Did you remember a vagina bottle? Yeah, because this is the one that's like a big It's like it's a it's it's cool. It's actually a cool bottle, but yeah, it definitely has like a vagina ish. It's not a big hole. A vagina ish hole in the middle. Oh gosh. So they do a toast and Gertie's like to life, love, and this is so Haiti. To friendship. Okay. <laughs> Let's make it count every yeah. day. Like a great person on Sesame Street once said, let's make it count every day. <laughs> so then Andy, guys, for a special surprise encore performance, please welcome Julius Opera duet partner, Jonathan. <laughs> so we turned to blue lights, which, you know, is bold, I think, on any cast. Yes. And um, they bring out Jonathan and he's singing Ave Maria in a tux. Yeah, he's like... Ave Maria. Oh my god, I love this song. Like, this is like such a good thing. <laughs> Lars Lars I love like, this song. This is a real banger. Love this song. Ave Maria. This is like about Jesus' mom. You know what? Like, how come we don't talk about Jesus' mom? Like, if we're going to talk about everybody else's mom and dad. And then Julia all of a sudden has, they're all looking at him. They don't realize that Julia now suddenly has a microphone. And then she's clearly singing the track because we know what she sounds like when she doesn't sing the track. And, and then it turns into the EDM version and they just rock out to I, yeah. I was dying laughing. And Andy's doing that dance where he like, he like bites over his <laughs> lower lip and he's like, mm. Andy just dancing. Like that. Talk about dancing like no one's looking. You know, my God, he really does <laughs> that. 
and so it's it's like hilarious it's so bizarre and so surreal You're like oh it's over but then you see like everyone's dancing except for marisol marisol is still sitting on the sofa her hair is like all messy and she's like what is happening here so she gets up and she goes over to alexia and she goes you know when you asked about liars you picked me why would you throw me under the bus i didn't like, say that don't lie don't lie don't no, be a liar like that no because I did you not said say it that. like no, no no i don't forget no, things i, didn't say I don't i don't forget I didn't things like that. i said you were well, all liars well, by, said, the way, by the way by the way mexico city is really nice i don't i don't remember it looking you like forgot. this before no we're not in mexico city <laughs> you forgot you know that's not you cool see? bro why are you picking on no, me no you forgot no like, you forgot what I, we are no, she's, listen, I, I said Adriana's the biggest liar. I just said that you forget things. So you need to stop. It's like, I am super offended. That is not acceptable. It's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and we get next season's life. Here's my only complaint that there was no fog machine. Because I feel like this yeah, needed there a, fog been a fog machine. Yeah. But well, otherwise, it's like, it's no, not, no, it's a great show. Yeah, well, there was no fog machine because it's not like Club Send It. <laughs> Club send it, bro. The send it lab is open for business for late night debauchery. Yeah, baby. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's a fun season, Miami. We love you. Please never change. Yes. Um, I'm ready for the next season to start right now. Yeah, me too. I love this show. I hope it does well because the ratings were not great. Uh, People, so I hope they still bring it back anyway. They will. They will. I think that they're, I think the online chatter about it is very strong, and Bravo cares about that. So well, we'll for, see. Um, everybody, thank you so much. We love you. Come watch this video on Patreon and uh, get all our bonuses, etc., over there. And we will talk to you next time. For those of you who are only here for Miami, hope to see you again. See Miami, you soon, Miami. Okay. You look Bye. great. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at Wondery.com slash survey. In the 1980s, Frank Farian was riding high as a successful German music producer, but he was bored. German pop was formulaic, dull, and oh so white. Frank had bigger dreams, American dreams. He wanted to create the kind of music that would rival larger-than-life artists like Michael Jackson or Run DMC. So he assembled a hip-hop duo, two once-in-a-lifetime talents who were charismatic, full of sex appeal, and phenomenal dancers. The only problem? One very important element was missing, but Frank knew just how to fix that. Wondery's new podcast, Blame It on the Fame, dives into one of pop music's biggest controversies. Millie Vanilli set the world on fire, but when their adoring fans learned about the infamous lip syncing, their downfall was swift and brutal. With exclusive interviews from frontman Fab Morvan and his producers Frank Varian and Ingrid Segui, this podcast takes a fresh look at the exploitation of two young Black artists. Follow Blame It on the Fame wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to Blame It on the Fame early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus.